Andrew McGahan for the MacLife.com here in Dublin, Ireland, standing alongside John Kavanagh. And John, we are a couple of weeks away now from the biggest fight in combat sports history, but you are going to be breaking your own record this Friday night in the three arena. It used to be 11, but I, at the moment, barring any disasters, 13 SBG fighters competing this weekend in BAM at the three arena. As of today, nine. Oh, no. I keep getting, I keep getting close to it, and then there's pullouts, and so the BAM are scrambling at the moment to uh, try and find replacements. Um, but look, whether it's 9, 10, 11, or 12, it's going to be a great night. Okay, I think I ruined the start of that, but it's okay. We'll move on to this. Now, as you said on Twitter, you're no longer an MMA guy. You're that boxing guy now. Yes. What have you noticed is the biggest change? Like, as the, the highlight of the Diaz 2 fight was that you said you went back to basics, went back to how it was, a structured training camp, and all things done the way that maybe by the letter of the law. Yeah. What was it like applying that sort of concept to a boxing camp as opposed to a mixed martial arts one? Um, I get in trouble when I say this, but I'm saying it's simpler because there's just less skills involved as opposed to getting ready for a mixed martial arts. Um, boxing is an element. Now, we don't, obviously, in boxing for MMA, we don't go into it as detailed as you do for boxing for boxing's sake. However, it's still one of a myriad of skills that we need for MMA, so it's simpler. Um, but then on the, on the flip side, then, it's, it's very interesting because you get to really delve deep into what it is that, that is boxing. And, um, you know, I'd have to right off the bat say very clearly that it's own Roddy that deserves, um, deserves credit for, for putting together the game plan in this fight. Um, I'm, I'm playing a role in it, but uh, it's, I, I've been sitting back watching Owen. And, you know, Owen and Connor have been with me since they're 16, 17, uh, coming up with plans and, and, and playing around with different martial arts and techniques and strategies and, and just kind of watching the two of them bounce off ideas off each other whatever it is, 10 or 11 years later, it's, uh, it's, a, very, it's a very proud moment. It's, it's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it. Is it making you feel a little bit older so that maybe the actual title of the godfather of Irish MMA now is becoming more applicable as these camps go on? Maybe uh, the 27, I'm the godfather of boxing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I, you know, it's, it's, like I said, it's, it's, it's a learning experience. It's, it, we don't get to do this too often where you just really... Um, immerse yourself in one style. I read somewhere people were thinking that uh, this will have a negative effect on Connor when he goes back to MMA. I think it's only going to have a positive effect. It's really, wh wh when else could you just completely shelve everything and focus on one art, which he did for a long time with Jiu Jitsu as an example, but hasn't done it with boxing in a long time. And, uh, I, you know, whatever about the other arts in, uh, in, in MMA, Connor came from boxing and boxing was always in his heart. He was always showing me different boxing fights uh, uh, over the years. So now that he gets to really uh, immerse himself in it and drag us all deep into that uh, rabbit hole with him, it's, uh, it's fascinating. We just spoke to Artem Lobov and I was trying to get a feel for him because it seems like the mixed martial arts fighters I've spoke to about this have been on the fence on it, but I think it's good to get uh, other people's opinions on it. When you only have to focus on one facet of mixed martial arts, you don't have to worry about your footwork in terms of if the guy shoots a double leg or if the guy enters into a clinch. You don't have to worry about elbows. You don't have to worry about kicks. You don't have to worry about jiu-jitsu. So surely the idea of taking out all of the things that you're so used to being integrated into your training camp and focus on the, the two weapons, I suppose, that have garnered you the biggest sort of attention in your career to date, then this should be an enjoyable experience more than anything. Yeah, uh, without going into too much detail, just to throw a number at you, we're doing four times the amount of sparring for this camp than we would do for a regular MMA camp. Uh, that's an, a huge amount of extra rounds. And, and really, whatever other parts you get ready for a fight, whether it's boxing or MMA, without doubt, the most important part of that is sparring. That's the sport. So you can be doing movement drills and, 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 and weightlifting and running and all of these different things that go with it. But number one should be sparring, as long as it's sensible. And uh, to be able to do four times the amount of sparring, the progress we're seeing, because we, 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 uh, you know, after each sparring session, we do video analysis, and the progress we're seeing from one session to the next is uh, like everything Connor does. When Connor gets his mind on something, he's scarily focused. And to see him apply that, and even yesterday, we're up in his house, and he's writing down his notes like the old days again. And we, uh, we watch the video, we compare his notes, and we make improvements, and then we spar again, and then repeat. And I, I really feel we've, we've come on leaps and bounds in, in, in a very short time. And we're only halfway through this camp. We have another, another uh, mesocycle to go through when we get out to Vegas. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing another big leap forward.
And then just to finish, because he mentioned the other day he felt that this was the next level in terms of camps. Going from Alvarez to this, this is more professional. He said it was just kind of a natural thing that happened. But even the details that you see that are put in place for whether the sparring partners are here beforehand warming up so they're thoroughly ready, um, hands being wrapped properly before every single training session, no matter what, it's kind of getting into that mindset for what will happen. Is this early visualization in training for what is going to happen the actual fight night? Because you have never been in a boxing fight night scenario yes. in comparison to a mixed martial arts one? Yes, I, I think we will have done basically about 44 fight nights before fight night. So the 45th time we walk out, we will be very, it will seem very normal to us. It won't be anything catching us off guard. Uh, but like you said, yeah, did, doing a camp with Connor now at this stage, largely because of the fin- don't, not having financial restraints, is a joy because I mean I have a sleep analysis here today that will that checks what a sleep is like you know for a lot of training like a lot of guys trying to get do training camps it's going around a job and just the the, the budget of food and, and travel and stuff that's it's just nothing here it's it's like a kind of like a playground I get to just pick and choose wherever I want um, so for that it's 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 fantastic a lot of weight off the shoulders you know we're we're standing here in a custom built gym that was put together in three days. Um, again, when you're able just to wave a magic wand and get stuff done, it's, it makes life a lot easier. So yeah, the, 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 the whole camp has been a great experience. It's been, we've, since, since the, if you want to start from the Nate loss, we've, we've, we've made massive changes each training camp and everyone is getting more and more detailed and everyone is getting more and more ta- tailored to Connor's specific needs and it's working great. Excellent. John, thank you very much. See you soon.